Hi, I'm Corey Glover from Living Color, and that just happened. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Front Row Joe, and we're here with the legendary Corey Glover of Living Color. Hi. Corey, so glad that you could be with us. Thank Hi. you so much. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Super good. excited for the show tonight. Good. Uh, I know that this is uh, stop number what on the uh, Shade Tour? Beats the hell out of me. <laughs> All the days kind of coming into one? Yeah, I'm just, it's just a day all one day i got gotcha, you yeah. i got gotcha. you well we're so excited that you guys are back out on the road you were here in florida about a year ago um maybe a year, year and a half ago year and a half yeah right right at this venue at the culture yeah, room it's like two years ago actually it was two years ago two years ago <laughs> right right um <coughs> so we're happy to see you guys out yeah. a new album yes after four and a half years or so yeah, but actually it's like eight years since our last release actually right I think. Yeah, well, what? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Took us took us a while to get it done. Took us about four years to get it done. Right. So how that leads into my first question: How is it after that long a period between when you're recording the songs, it finally gets released, and then you can bring it to the masses live? How does that feel? It's weird because um, we forgot it all. Because you know, we a lot of these songs were written two, three years ago. Uh, and, and you'd think circumstances would have changed, but they didn't. And and then the record comes out, and it was like, oh, now we got to remember what the hell we did. So that's that's what this this tour primarily is us trying to road test our our, our new stuff, really. So any any type of uh, a rust, or are you guys still on point? No, no, we're still doing it, and it's still fine. Um, it's just remembering things, remembering parts. Um, because you know, initially recording this stuff, we recorded it some uh, a particular way, and then it got edited and they got changed, and certain things got turned around. So we have to figure out how to, how to work this so it works live. You know, you guys have always pushed the boundaries of rock, of mm. funk, mm. and you've continued to do so. Shade is so much different than some of the other albums that you put out. How do you guys keep that evolution going? You know, it, you you want to be better than the last thing you, that you did. You want to you want to be uh, you want to learn from what you did in the past. You want to learn from your mistakes and you want to learn from your successes. And if this works, so you expound upon it. If this didn't work, how do you make it better? So it's it's all it's a constant sort of thing. You have to always have to do that. And I would imagine that's true it just should be true in life I, I don't know if most people do that but it should be true in life that you 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 accentuate the positive and downplay the negative or at least try to so so what inspires you what inspires you guys to keep changing and, and getting better then year after year after year after being together for so long um you know we we spend a, a great deal of time together um sort of like trying to listen to one another but we spend a, a, an equal amount of time apart trying to hone our craft whichever way that is um whether that's going to find uh masters of whatever craft it is that you're trying to find and and learning from them or finding new experiences that you can bring back to the to the collective so we try very hard to 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 not let what we do be what we just this thing with the four of us be the only thing that we do Right, right. So each each one of you guys are phenomenal musicians in your own right. You all have side projects Absolutely. that are going on. I think that's what contributed to the, the shade taking so long to get to get out there, among other things, is well, you guys I, were busy, right? No, I think we we were concentrating on this record, and I think concentrating on this record meant that we wanted it to sound a particular way. We wanted to, to have certain things in it, so. For me to hear back what we'd gotten, and we'd finish the record two or three times, according to us, and then we'd listen to it back and go, "No, it's not done. It's still not done. It still needs this. It still needs that. It still needs uh, uh, tweaks and fixes and stuff like that." So we concentrated on the record that whole time. Um, but you know, you have to live a life. You know, we're, 
you still got a mortgage to pay. You still have, you know, you still have kids to feed. So, um, but our main focus was always what what Living Color needs to do and how it needs to make the best possible representation of where we are right now and what that sounds like. Right, right. And and uh, I saw in another interview or maybe read that uh, your interpretation of what Shade is or the name Shade for the album was just mimicking life, the sun passing over, yeah. casting shade. Is that is that still yeah, hold true? Yeah, absolutely. That, you know, within within the darkness, there's a lot of things going on within the, you know, one, uh, the whole idea that you cannot have light without darkness to know what the contrast is. That you have to know what you have to know where you are and how you are in conjunction to to where where our light is and how it and where it affects you and how it affects you. You know they talk about people who who are deprived of sunlight have a particular condition. You know, um, but you need to to uh, to cast a shadow over something is very significant. It's a very significant place to be. A very significant thing to, to be about and and along with that you had talked about how um, shade also was kind of a conglomeration of what has formed uh, you and your bandmates uh, into musicians uh, the the music that you grew up with creating you and and even in the track listing there's three covers yeah. uh, representing old school R&B mm -hmm. rap mm -hmm. and blues yeah uh, what other influences growing up that made its way onto the shade record well this stuff like uh, invisible which to me sounds like uh, you know old Buddy Miles kind of stuff and Electric Flag or uh, like this stuff that sounds a little bit like uh, Palm and Funkadelic and, and uh, with uh, two sides it sounds sort of like it's our homage to Maggot Brain and that kind of thing um, there is stuff on there that sounds like you know early punk music to me um, so all of, the, all of our influences in, are in there we just tried to throw it into a blues idiom and deconstruct from there and see how that works and it definitely has like the the marvin Gaye cover that you have inner city blues it has the living color spin on it right 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 well it's it's our version of whatever it's gonna sound like us fortunately <laughs> um whenever we do it's gonna sound like the four of us so we can we, you can always count on that so it, you know as soon as I open my mouth, I don't think you're not, not, not I think it's somebody else. Oh, absolutely. A, a sound all its own, which has made you guys so unique yeah. and, and uh, I, I think, you know, propelled you through these so many years. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm grateful for the, the ability to be able to do this because um, this is all I have, you know, really. It's just, this is the, my main focus. This is what, this is my first love. Do you mean m music or living color or both? both you know this is you know th this is how this is my main avenue of expression and this is where I uh, this is the most truthful place I can I can be you know there's some solo stuff that I've done in the past and that's very that stuff is very very personal that's uh, uh, it, it's it's very very much my inner workings um, but the Living Color has a holistic sort of thing. It's the inner and the outer. Yeah, right on. Okay, I can understand that for sure. So whenever Living Color took a hiatus in 95, and took about five years to come back together, was yeah. how did that affect you if that's your only thing? If, we were, if that's your only thing, well, how did that affect you? We, only, we were only gone from, we were only away from each other for a year and a half. Uh, it took us a while to, to get a record out, but we were, you know, we stopped, we stopped playing in 95 because we needed a vacation. You know, up until that point, all we did was play and make records and play and make records and play. Um, in the interim, you know, life sort of happened around us. Uh, Muzzy left. Uh, you know, one of my parents died. You know, things, things were going on that I needed to take, that we all needed to take a break from and sort of recollect ourselves and re uh, re-energize ourselves 
away from each other and get a, get some rest. And that's basically what we did. And, you know, it was like a year and a half, like 96, 97, we had, we were around each other and by, by 1998, we were, 99, we were just back working and we've been working ever since then. So it's, uh, it's, you know, like I said, this is, you, you, this is a part of my life that, that is very integral. You know, I can't, sometimes I like to escape it, but I can't. So Corey Glover is living color and living color is Corey Glover. To a degree, and Living Color is Vernon Reed and Will Calhoun and Doug Wimbish. You know, uh, it's, it's, you know, one does n not, we don't exist without the other. You know, without, it doesn't sound like Living Color if, if Vernon's not there, you know, and, and everybody else, it doesn't sound like what it is, what Living Color sounds like. Yeah, for sure. And, and, uh, there are many bands that have existed in name only and had different member changes Absolutely. and they still play the old songs but the new stuff doesn't sound like them to their core right, right? but uh, again each individual Doug Will Vernon being accomplished musicians in their own right um, I'm just we're gonna play a name game when I when I say their name first thing that pops in your mind what they bring to live in color okay all right Vernon um, experimentation all right, what about Will? Will brings uh, history. Will is a very studied of older and uh, older styles of music. He's traveled to uh, parts of Africa and parts of Australia and parts of parts of the world studying his craft um, and doing uh, and using it and utilizing it as far as Living Color is concerned. Certainly. And uh, Doug? Doug brings innovation. Doug has a uh, has his eyes looking forward on a lot of stuff and he brings a lot of what's next to the table which is great. Excellent. And last but not least, Corey. What does Corey Glover bring to Living Color? Chaos. <laughs> It's just necessary, you know, yeah. to 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 stir things up. Well, speaking of that chaos, I first came to know Living Color after a certain performance on the Arsenio Hall show right, right after Vivid came right. out in 88. Do you remember that show? Yes. And, I mean, you were up in the audience, you were jumping around and screaming, and, and of course, the, you know, iconic cult of personality just hit, hit me in the face. I was already a rock fan, right. but from that moment on, I was a Living Color fan. Oh, great. Do you remember that night? Because that was fairly recent, or fairly young in, in the career, and Vivid, I mean, that song put you on the map uh, as, as a group. Do you remember that, uh, that performance? or what happened after that? What surrounded that performance? Well, you know, um, we were playing, we had been playing uh, a lot. We've been on the road a lot. Um, and we play, We wound up in L.A. Um, playing, I believe we played at the uh, Whiskey then like two nights before and then we were playing at, doing the Arsenio Hall show. And uh, it's funny because everybody in Arsenio's band, we knew. Mm. You know, um, we knew the drummer, we knew the keyboard player, we knew a bunch of folks in the band. So it wasn't like it was that kind of it was that kind of thing. And then we started we started rehearsing and everything. And uh, and our studio came out and was like, "Oh, this sounds great! It's gonna be great! It's gonna be really, really cool!" Was, okay, let's let's go for it. And you know, we just sort of like did it, it like we usually do it, just re very normally, very regularly. Uh, and then at the performance, it was like. Fuck it, let's go for it. You know, and we just and we just went nuts, and and the audience seemed to enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a little bit different playing for a TV audience versus a, a live maybe audience, something like this, correct? Yeah. Well, you know, you can only do it once. You know, on TV, you're only going to see it one time. 
on TV. Is that what drove you? Because normally on stage, the the feedback from the crowd, the energy from the crowd gives you energy, but the studio audience may not so much, but you still went off. For me, uh, you know, the, studios, the studio audience is too far away. That's why I, why I went out there, because like, I wanted to get closer to them and hear what they were, what, how they were reacting to it. And, uh, and that was much more interesting to me than standing in front of them and trying to perform with, for them as, as opposed to try, performing with them. So, so that wasn't planned. I mean, the camera guys had to scramble to follow you into the yeah. crowd. Yeah, they had no idea I was going to do that. Oh, that's that's terrific. Yeah. So, uh, what's next for uh, Living Color? You guys wrap up the tour, and, and then what? Any plans? You just taking it day by day? We're gonna um, we're gonna finish this up toward the middle of November, and then we're going to uh, uh, get ready for 2018. We're gonna probably try to play some major markets. Do a lot of fest. Try to do some festivals in the uh, in the spring and the summer. You know, I like to play. I'd like to play some more festivals. I like to get out there because those are great audiences. So let's we'll see how that goes. Perfect. And uh, for the new album, Shade, where can uh, people pick that up? You can. It's on iTunes. It's on Spotify. It's on Title. It's. Anywhere you're looking for it, it's even at record stores, believe it or not, a record Those store. Those still exist? They think record one, stores? One or two. Yeah, <laughs> one or two. Excellent. Well, Corey, man, it's been an honor to sit down with you and uh, ask you a couple questions. You've been very gracious. Thank you so Thank very you. much. Thank you for coming. Thank uh, you for having Enjoy the show. Absolutely. Looking, yeah. looking forward to it, for sure. Okay.